Well, first of all, a blanket of thank yous to the City Council. Um, I'm sure you guys remember me from last time, and so I wanted to use my time to address uh, Measure Y using two lenses of analysis for you this evening. The first being the excessive force of OPD supported by uh, Mayor Kwan and in some ways other members of the council as well. Secondarily, the financial burdens of the city uh, that the city is already under. Um, on the excessive force, Mayor Kwan and the chief of OPD, Her um, Howard Jordan, have been working to silence the new voices of the society who have come together under the Occupy umbrella for political protest and a redress of their grievances, which where better else to do that than the city hall steps within their local government. Um, I kind of wanted to tell you a story, and I, I feel a little down that people are leaving while I'm speaking, but I wanted to talk about specifically Nika Crawford, who's a friend of mine. She's an Oakland resident, and she's also a student at Cal State East Bay. Her sister um, is named Pola, and she also just graduated from Cornell University and passed her bar in California on her first try. Nika and I, on January 4th, attended the General Assembly um, right outside here, and we were having a conversation about the organic class structure of America, um, and we were deep off into this conversation, which in my opinion puts us right into the middle, dead center of our First Amendment rights, when all of a sudden 17 um, Oakland police officer cars pulled up and riot officers jumped out, and we didn't know what to do. Now, we ran over to the sidewalk, and she asked me where to go, and I told her that I didn't know because we were in public and I had no idea where it would be safe at this point. We had several officers escort us to the corner of 14th and Broadway where we were told that we should stay there if we did not want to go to jail. At which point in time, I had my camera and I was video recording, video recording and I stepped off a little bit from her. Nika never moved and she was arrested for obstruction of justice. When she went to court, that charge then changed. There was no obstruction of justice, but there was malicious obstruction of a walkway, of a throughway, of the sidewalk, which is um, going towards the, assess the excessive force and the blatant unjust, uh, the unjust causes, the unjust attacks that the people of Occupy are actually subjected to. So I'm saying that there is a lack of oversight. However, Mayor Kwan is not only supporting this, but she is actually inciting or giving the direct orders for the police department to control, quote unquote, the Occupy um, encampment or the occupiers, but she's not providing a la um, not providing oversight to ensure that nonviolent protesters are not being beat, that compliant people are not being arrested for unjust causes, that there is not being chemical warfare used when children are present. Also, people are being arrested for bringing out a table to put food on. I don't know about you, but I was told that I shouldn't put food on the ground. So if I'm coming out there to feed homeless people, which several people are doing out there, they're being arrested. One person, individual, was actually beat with her own bike when she rolled past the police officers holding up a peace line. These are things that I've not only seen, but they are recorded and they are on the internet for anyone to access. So these are the types of things why I'm saying that we need to be very weary of offering more money to the Oakland Police Department as if this is going to fix a lot of the problems that we're having. The reason that we're having so many problems is because we're investing in the problem maker. What's happening now is that we are criminalizing a lot of the people who are disenfranchised from our political process and from just being able to survive within a highly capitalistic society. Now, I also I wanted to speak about a couple other members here, well, who are not here actually, and they can't be here today because they are Oakland residents and they were arrested during protests non-violently, uh, and then the judge gave them stay away orders from Frank Ogawa Plaza. These are Oakland residents who will have to break the law to come speak to the people who are supposed to represent them. This is systematically disenfranchising and impressing more people within the city of Oakland. And unfortunately, within that same, simultaneously, within that, within that same um, action, you're doing nothing but empowering Occupy, which I am not saying it is a bad thing thing, but it's just showing that Occupy is providing more of a forum to accept more of the community's voices, to actually hear their problems and try to work towards fixing them with very limited resources and in the face of very direct and violent oppression. So I'm saying when I hear this, um, once again, the lady before me who came up and spoke, whose name I didn't know, who was saying that there was lit sticks of dynamite being thrown at the police. I mean, I don't know how many of you know me or have researched me or whatever after the last um, time I was here, but I'm, I'm not a poor character. Any, I mean, I've had, like, I said, not a perfect past, but I'm not a poor character. And I've been sitting out there a lot of the time out of pure curiosity to see what was happening actually on the front line of the Occupy movement. And as I see a lot of these injustices, and as a person who believes that I'm, I'm as an American, the Constitution is supposed to protect me, specifically the Bill of Rights, from an abusive government, I see this and I come crying to city council and I come trying to get as much time as I can to speak to you because I truly feel as if I voted for representatives and that this, if this system is working, then these problems have to be 
be fixed. We shouldn't be giving more and more money to the police department for criminalizing people trying to make it. We should be giving more money to the school system. Let's not even talk about the fact that one of my nieces thinks seven times two is 32. That's a problem. You know what I mean? Like, let's not even talk about the level of education, that the, the quality of education that's being given, but let's talk about the fact that we can't even keep the schools open. That's highly problematic. So now we have it to where several people can't even go to school. We have it to where a lot of people can't find jobs and are disenfranchised. What else are they supposed to do here? Like, how else are they supposed to survive? I want to continue to address this later on the non-consent item where I'm just going to have more time. Um, I do apologize if it feels like this, this is excessive, but being that I'm a resident of Oakland and I do want to participate in the government as it is and try to get things handled through the process as in continue to be respected by the chamber as these I feel as if I'm being respected by the chamber that um you know, that we can continue to have the dialogue and actually work towards progress, but we can't do that when we keep using the Oakland Police Department to try to criminalize those who really do just need help, who really do just need for the people here to listen to their problems, genuinely listen and try to fix them. Not point fingers, not judge, but step out of your shoes and step out of like, I don't know, the situation, the box in which you're trying to like take your perspective and look at their problems and actually listen to them. I'm sorry, just give me two more seconds to wrap up, but I'm like, just actually listen to them and try to work towards the, the solution instead of creating more of a, a, a less, I mean, a less solvable problem. So um, once again, thank you, and I look forward to speaking to you again. Okay, so I just want to start off finishing with the um, excessive force disadvantage, basically, that I'm presenting before I go into the financial. Um, anyway, I want to finish talking about how it's criminalizing the, how the police department is criminalizing the oppressed because they come to feed the homeless who can't find services within the city and they're being arrested for putting food on the table. Some have been arrested for, you know, um, riding a bike while reciting poetry or, like I said, riding a bike and holding up the peace sign. I personally, during the day um, Egyptian Solidarity March, after the Oakland Police Department had dragged a man jet through the streets until his clothes were torn while we were about to march in solidarity with Egyptian women who consequently had their, were dragged through the streets until their clothes were torn. Like this is happening right here outside the plaza, right in front of Ivy Hoagies. And um, right after that, when we're walking past the police station from the 13th floor, seven windows over from the right hand side, I had water thrown on me while I'm recording on my Ustream similarly to how this young lady is doing now. So I'm saying that giving more money to the police department in effect to decrease crime or to decrease violence is not working because they are in effect the ones increasing crime and increasing violence and inciting rights. That's exactly what's happening now. So um, I want to say that these abuses have not only been supported by Mayor Kwan, but the orders have been initiated, a lack of oversight provided on Mayor Kwan's behalf to make sure that the laws are actually being obeyed by the same officers that are being called upon to uphold them. The emails uncovered by KT TVU depict the fact that there's a conspiracy between Mayor Kwan and Howard Jordan when it comes, um, when it was written, I don't know how you want to share this good news of the crime decreasing by 19% since Occupy because it's an opposition of our message that Occupy is increasing violence. Um, these are the types of things that make me question the ethics of those who've been elected to represent and protect the community. And furthermore, makes me wonder in what way will the funds be used, especially since there's no guarantee that there has been any legitimacy to the allocation of the funds thus far. And I'm sure or several others do doubt that there are any other, um, do doubt that the funds would be used appropriately if they are given to the Oakland Police Department. Um, excuse, um, Council Member De La Fuente, I was reading an article, forgive me if I can't, De La Fuente, excuse me, Council Member De La Fuente, um, I was reading an article, and I'm sorry if I can't remember the exact source, but within that article you were referring to someone who was attacking your stance on the Occupy or against the Occupy movement. In that you were quoted saying, well, how would you feel if it was them against you? And to that I say, as a representative of the people, you should not feel as if the people are battling against you. As a representative, you should feel as if you are on the side of the people and they are trying to talk to you. And what you are hearing is frustrated voices who are gathering outside saying, you're not hearing me. Specifically, like right now when I was addressing you by your name, but you are not hearing me. So I'm like, these are the types of things that people are saying, and I don't think it's an irrational response. I think it's a frustrated response. I think we all need to be patient with each other to move past it and work on. Um, anyways, um, 
I want to tell a story really quickly, very quickly about my mother. Ms. Brooks, you should know, 3436 Kingsland Avenue. Unfortunately, my parents had split up and my mother was living by herself. However, living right around the corner from Desley Brooks, at about 1 o'clock in the morning, someone had broken into my mom's home when she was there alone, 50-something years old. Now, when she called the Oakland Police Department, amazingly, they did not have the resources to send to a homeowner, tax-paying citizen within Oakland. However, if I get pulled over in my little 89 Honda for, like, running past a stop sign, all of a sudden there are four police cars behind me and there's a whole bunch of stuff. Or if we're at Occupy and I'm sitting out here knitting a scarf for somebody who's cold and homeless, we can have a whole bunch of police officers just standing there. And at that point, I don't think it's an appropriate allocation of funds and to give them millions of dollars more to do what? To literally play Angry, angry Birds. I have it on my Ustream. I have cards for you if you'd like to see it. I've documented the fact that we are literally paying people to sit there and not do anything, not protect the community, but instead intimidate them out of... I don't know, having a voice, participating in the process. People are afraid to come down because of the violence of the police department, not because of the violence of Occupy. I'm down there all the time by myself with a pink Hello Kitty backpack. Like, I'm in my laptop with a cell phone. I'm not, I'm more concerned about police violence than I am about being mugged by people who I don't know or who are covering their faces and hiding their identity so they aren't targeted by the police department. So this is a very real concern that we need to pay attention to instead of pointing our fingers and saying those are crazy anarchists. Like, no, it's written within the Declaration of Independence that at the point to where our government becomes abusive or becomes um oppressive that we have the right and the duty as citizens. Like, if we're going to claim that these are our rights, the Constitutional Bill of Rights, if these are our rights, our only duty is to protect them. And at the point to where the government is viewed as being abusive or being oppressive to people and offering, um, allowing stayaways to where citizens cannot come address their or concerns to their council members, like, this is systematically disenfranchising people. It's causing more of a muted, a muted view, excuse me, muted voice scenario. And at that point, it's only going to make people more frustrated and it's going to make your jobs hard. So I'm like, instead of like butting heads, let's pay attention to each other and let's put down like, let's stop all of this segregation, let's stop all of this otherizing, let's stop, you know what I mean, like not agreeing with each other and arguing for the sake of arguing and just try to really focus on the issue, I mean, focus on um, fixing things. So going on to focusing on fixing things, let me talk more about the financial matters. First of all, within the city of Oakland specifically, I believe the average is about $4.50 a day for food stamps. And then a lot of people who have, especially black men in Oakland who like to wear locks, I don't want to call them dreads because that's not, they're called locks. But I'm like, if they have locks and they're culturally inclined to want to do that, nine times out of ten, they don't look clean, cut enough for a job. Or maybe they can't pass a background check because they sold some weed way before medicinal marijuana was uh, was legal in California. And at that point, an increased police presence at, is effectively racist. Like, it doesn't stop me from embezzling millions of dollars from a corporation. As a matter of fact, I'll come buy you coffee and have donuts with you. You know, but it, what it does stop is people who are disenfranchised in lower socioeconomic communities from doing other things like maybe selling some weed or, I'm sorry, prostitution. Like, I'm not entirely um, a fan of these things, but when you're trying to survive or provide for children in an economy where tax paying citizens citizens are trying to provide services for disenfranchised individuals, but no matter how many taxes those, they pay, those services are steadily being cut, like people are going to try to do what they can do to survive. So instead of being viewed as survivalists within an economy that's not providing for them, they're being criminalized and it's making, it's just making everything worse and it's not really helping anyone. So um, not only that, we have unemployment that's higher than congressional approval rating and that's problematic. We have more vacant houses than homeless people. So when Tenth and Mandela and they go to jail for um, having... <clears throat> Excuse me the foreclosed home tied up in a civil matter and then the police come and arrest them for that without the judge having ruled on who exactly has the rights over that property like how did the police even have the authority to go in there when a judge had not ruled on that matter yet you see so these are the types of things where Occupy is coming into the community I'm sorry Measure Y you're charging money but Occupy is doing it for free every single day and so I'm like when people in the community pay taxes and then also go home and try to see if they can find extra blankets or find extra shoes or knit blankets or, or scarves or whatever to take care of individuals who have now come to Franco Gawa Plaza, also named Oscar Grand Plaza at this time, because that's where they know they can get resources. It doesn't matter, because I'm from Oakland. I know when the homeless people sleep underneath the, the walkway at um, Wiley Emanuel, it's not a problem. If they're at the gas station asking me for some change so they can wash my windows, it's not a problem. But when citizens come and say, hey, come to City Hall, because we're too, excuse my language, pissed off about this, um, you know, we're paying taxes and these services aren't being offered, like, come to City Hall, we will give them to you for a redress of grievances. When we get here, we're met by the 
police department instead of being met by concerned representatives who will want to hear our issues and how we think we can fix them. So that's also more problematic. So I'm saying instead of having a war on drugs, because we spend more on the war on drugs than most drug dealers make selling the drugs. So I'm like at the point to where we're spending so much money on the war on drugs and it's not really working. Can we have like a war on abusive politics and systematic oppression or, you know what I mean, abusive law enforcement? That would be totally awesome if we could do that or get rid of the word war, period, and stop having abusive and violent rhetoric fueling people's minds and say, let's have a fix it project. Let's have a project to actually get things done and don't hide like abusive practices. I'm sorry, Measure Y, within the abusive, within the, the legislation. Um, and I would like to refer to a couple things I was said really quickly. First of all, the services like child care that already exist have wait lists that mirror Section 8. So a lot of people can't wait a year to figure out if their kid is going to be able to go to child care because Home Depot doesn't care what your situation is. And if you want to keep a job to pay your rent, then you're going to have to figure something out. And um, honestly, these type of things make me question the base of the statistics that we're gathered from because I live in East Oakland and I don't see a decrease in crime. I see stuff happening all the all the time. So oh, the only time I see Measure Y is a sign in somebody's yard. I don't see anything actually happening uh, to the point to where I walk to the store and there's shell casings on the ground. So I don't think Measure Y is doing much of anything. Um, not only that, um, citizens have lost face, lost face in decreasing the violence with police because the police, like I said it before, have been the source of the violence. And also, there's not a 98th Street in Oakland, so I see how familiar you are with the areas that you are working closely within when you refer to 98th Street in East Oakland. It's an avenue, I'm sorry. There's no 98th Street in East Oakland. So um, the streets are in downtown and West Oakland, so just in case you didn't know, I'm going to let you know that. And the dem if demographics are the base of your research and unemployment programs, you should know that the strategies for crime prevention should include knowing the people an actual strategy. Just placement of officers does not work um, to, to decrease crime. And about the legality, um, oh, excuse me, about the legality and the insults um, that came from Mrs. Kerrigan about that is ridiculous, is bothersome. As a representative of the people who is being paid by the taxes of the people, is this how you consider all the concerns of the people who voice them? And if so, why is o Occupy catching so much heat? It's brought down crime, it feeds the ho poor and homeless, it provides clothes, books, and other supplies in the same citizens who have been slept up in the carpet. So if they're you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand why you would say that you feel as if a citizen's concern is ridiculous. I'm sorry, I still have speaking time. Um, you know what I mean? If a, if a citizen's concern is ridiculous and you're in an elected representative, any person on this council is a representative, then no concern should be too ridiculous, just like no question is stupid. It should be, it should be considered seriously because we are citizens and we are, we deserve to be listened to and taken seriously. So when you say that you take us, you think it's ridiculous, and I come in here trying to, you know, trying Trying to, I'm sorry, I know I'm over time here, but start trying to respect the process, trying to be very respectful, not mic checking the council because I would like to be viewed with respect as well. I take it offensive, especially after you speak to someone who likes Sven, who people take him for Ms. granted, Holly. but he's a very smart individual. So I would, I'm sorry, I would really like to, to be answered as far as to like, how do you really feel as if the concerns of citizens are ridiculous? Yeah, I, I would really like the opportunity okay. to answer you. I was actually her, referring to her, the... Her time, her time I, is I know up. her time is up, but I would like to respond, which is I was not referring to any citizen. I was referring to the procedural issue that my colleague raised. I, I was not referring to anything that you all... Well, the, I, was, I missed the fact that you raised it. I, the, um, I still think it is... I can, uh, let, let, me, let, let me say this. If a citizen raised it, I can see that that you would might think that that was an issue. My colleague knows better.